Hello and welcome to part 3 of our Fortran debugging course. My name is Holger and today we're talking about runtime checks. Let me start out with the difference between robust and fragile programming. In production, we want the software to just run. Not every defect causes an infection, not every infection causes a failure, and we don't want our program to fall over every time it gets a little bit of a hiccup. But we are here because you are debugging. You have a failure that you need to trace back. So in this case, it is imperative that you want this the failure to, to show itself as early as possible because the hardest part is to trace it back in time through the um, to the defect. The earlier it falls over, the easier it is to for you to find the defect. And this is where fragile programming falls in, comes in. The easiest way to make a program fragile is with runtime checks. Runtime checks means that the program itself monitors its state. And if it notices that it's in, in, an, in an infected state, it will fall over and give you some information of what's going, to, what's going on. For the Intel, Intel Fortran compiler, this can be enabled with the flag minus check all. But runtime checks have an impact on the performance and therefore they're usually disabled. During debugging, however, I strongly suggest you switch them on. They spot the infection far earlier. So let's have an example. I have here a program that hangs. It will not execute, it will not terminate, it will not produce any output, nothing's working. I can terminate the program, but let's compile it with the standard runtime checks enabled. Now, when I run the program, it shows me uh, an, it shows an infection. It notices that I have an array bound violation. The first index of the in array n has value 11, which is larger than the upper bound of 10. And if I look at the if I and, and if I look at the source code, I can see that here here I'm doing something. In, in this line, I'm accessing the array out of bounds to show that this was in fact the, uh, the, the error. I'm, compi I'm compiling it again. And now it produces output and everything's fine. And because now it's now working, I then compile it again with, without the runtime checks because that way it can run faster and it still produces the correct output. So while the compiler provided runtime checks are really easy to use and cover a lot of possible infections, the compiler cannot know about the details of your program and it makes it hard for him to guess certain infections. That's why you might want to include custom runtime checks as well. Now, modern programming language often has the keyword assert to declare that a certain expression should always be true. And if that expression should ever be false, at this point, then you have an infection. And the three most common uses for asserts are as preconditions to make sure that the parameters that you've supplied to a routine are okay, uh, as post conditions to ensure that the procedure leaves everything in the same state, and potentially also as invariants to make sure that, the, that your routine hasn't changed anything that it shouldn't change. Unfortunately, Fortune does not have asserts. However, we can easily make our own. So here, what I've done is I have a module that should that provides an interpolation routine. And I have then also created my own assert routine. And it's very easy. Um, it takes a logical expression. And if that is true, everything's fine. And if that's false, then we have a then we have an infection. And then it will print this the string called node. As well as the uh, as well as the um, stack trace. So let's have a look at the interpolation routine. Here, this routine has takes two arrays, and they should have the same size. So that's the first precondition, and I use assert to make sure that the size of the two arrays is the same. And also, it should the second. Uh, precondition is that the x-array should have increasing values. So 
And that is a quite a complex um, calculation here. So I'm basically taking two slices of the array, one starting from the second element to the end, the second one from the from the beginning to the second to last element, subtract them all from each other, and then all elements of this array should be larger than zero. It also further down calculates a factor, and this factor should be between zero and one. So I'm, again, I'm calling a few asserts here. And if I'm if I create this program, then I get uh, I get an error. One of the size of the arrays do not match. And if I make them with more debugging symbols. I also get more information. And that's all nice and cozy, but as I said before, but as I said before, um, these calculations are quite ex quite extensive. Only want to do them when you're actually in debugging mode. And what I use for that is I use the preprocessor. The preprocessor is quite useful because it takes certain directives in the code and modifies the source code before the compilation process. And the directive that I'm using here is the if defined if def, and I call a token debug. If I define a token debug, only then only then should it load this assertion routine. And the preprocessor directives always start with a with a octothor, and they have to start at the beginning of the line. So I'm now inter And I'm now and this way what I do is only if I define this debug token will these commands be executed. Otherwise they will be removed. So if you want to see what it does, uh, Intel Fortran compiler has the minus capital E flag that says just run the preprocessor over it and show me what the result is. So if I don't put any, if I don't give this debug token, then you can see that the use, the preconditions, and the and the post conditions have been removed from the code and will not be compiled. Um, now to to tell the compiler that. Um, this this code needs pre -pro needs a preprocessor. There are two ways. One is you can give the FPP option, but the more convenient way is to change the name. And this is simple change from a from a lowercase f to a capital F. That tells the that also tells the compiler to use the preprocessor. So. So again, without the debug token, we have nothing. But if, I, if we define the debug token, and it's done with the capital D debug, then you can see that these things are back in here. So. So without without uh, the debug token, what will happen is that the mod the program will try to run robust, but it fails. But 
But if I activate this debug token, then I get the the assert, the asserts will be executed and it, and it finds the and it finds the the defect or finds the infection much for, much uh, faster than just was the output here. That's it, and this this that's it for the for part three of my Fortran debugging tutorial. And next time I will be talking about debuggers, about the big guns. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.